divorced. Bing ba. Beheaded. Beheaded. Died. Ba, ba. And people are going to die, but that's like inevitable? inevitable? Popping bottles in the eyes. <laughs> like a blizzard. <laughs> when we drink. Jeez Louise. And to that, I say geez Louise. And to that, I say geez Louise. <laughs> Duke Cartman. Get dressed with me. No, get they didn't do me. an OOTD. Get ready for my witchcraft trial. <laughs> you do improv and you're listening to this podcast. Send us an email at girlhistorians at gmail.com. Or alternately, send up a flare. Between February 1692 and May 1693, more than 200 people were accused of witchcraft in Salem, Massachusetts. By the end of the Salem witch trials, the Massachusetts Bay Colony had executed 14 women, 5 men, and 2 dogs. My name is Blair. And I'm Carly. This is Girl Historians. The Salem Witch Files. Welcome back to Girl Historians. Whoa, I'm Carly. I'm Blair. Welcome back to the Salem Witch Files, where we're talking everything witches and more. For just five installments in 1999, you too can get a hat. That would be awesome. I actually, someone commented on the YouTube video being like, I want to get a hat so I can match with you guys. And I was like, I don't want to have to tell you that these hats are from Amazon. Yeah, and free. And also, I they're so toxic that they're like I feel it seeping into my brain skin. I know I um I was wearing a wool sweater yesterday and I was like I honestly I I think you you got it into my head that, that you're wool, allergic to that wool. I'm allergic to wool, which I'm just straight up not but yeah. now I'm like the fabric is doing something to my brain it's like I'm in last of us yeah and it's like it's spreading yeah it's spreading no I have in my adult life and this is such an interesting thing to talk about in this podcast so I'm so happy we're on wool as an <laughs> item I have just had to accept that I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to wool. And mm -hmm. if I'm not allergic, I just live in a space in my life where I can no longer ignore sensory, like, uncomfortabilities. Like, oh, I'm, if, uh, yes. it doesn't matter how cute the wool sweater is or how warm the wool socks are, it will ruin my day. Mm -hmm. Like, I get so itchy and I get bumps and it's just not worth it, which sucks because I have circulation problem so my feet are often cold in the winter and people are like wear wool socks and I'm like bitch I can't yeah so what I have to do is I wear cotton socks underneath and wool socks on top it's a whole thing that's smart though I have an alpaca wool sweater that I wore here today and it honestly is getting so ratty just because it's the softest thing in the world yeah. but it looks and serves the function of wool so I don't know you can touch that sweater later if you want I'll try it out we'll see if yeah, alpaca try, wool is for me out. How's your week been, Blair? What's new with you? Oh my God, my week has been pretty good. Kind of tiring. I got caught up on some things, which is good. And then I canceled all my plans for tomorrow when I'm doing so nothing. Nice. A Friday night, free to yourself is I know. nature's, one of nature's best luxuries. It is. So no, had a pretty solid week. We saw a, a six. Six. Should we talk about it? We should talk about six. Or do you want to talk about your week first? Um, we can talk week? about, okay, we'll talk about my week has been fine. I've been incredibly busy. Um, love that. You have been very busy. I've been very busy. I, you oftentimes, I think I often, you are my wisest friend. <gasps> Shut the fuck up. And I think I've gotten some of the best career advice and life advice from you. Oh my God. That's what I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, we're no. two minutes in and I'm like. <laughs> And you are worth love. Oh my God. I'm too emotionally volatile for <laughs> to you to this, drop for this, that it's, in the podcast. It's too in the Aww. middle of February for me to be committing <laughs> emotional violence like this. But you had said a while ago, and I don't, this is not exactly what I did, but you were like, if you want to be famous, like tell your agent, I want to be famous and I want to be booked and busy and your agent will love that. Mm -hmm. And I have, I don't have a pull to be really famous, but I literally went to every, like my manager, my agent, all these people who are kind of like on my team. Um, <laughs> disgusting to say my team. my team and I was like this is a career year like I'm careering this mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. I want to do here are these like concrete goals I want to set I did like concrete setting very specific goals for everything in January too the, of that. like here's how many view listens I want to get on the podcast here's what I wanted here's these like specific things I want mm -hmm. um, and the thing that nobody tells you about that is that it works and then you have to do a lot of work to get there though you know yes, like I'm yeah. like okay well if these like people then they'll hear me and I'll be like well I want a film and tv credit I want this and they're like great um so you need to do x y and z yeah you have to do so all these different things. a massive watershed um 
And it's not as if I'm like so busy because I'm so booked and busy, but it's because I'm like building the bricks that I will eventually put into the wall of my career. I mean, you can see we are recording in my house and those papers on my wall, each row, like each column is a different section of my life. And all of those are things I need to get done. Like it's horrifying. Yeah. Um, but I like being busy. It feels good. Yeah. I get stressed, but I think at the end of the day, also because I'm medicated and that being on Wellbutrin has been everything to me. This podcast should be sponsored by Wellbutrin. Well <laughs> um, I've just been feeling very like I get to do these things, not I have to do these things, even if they're annoying. I mean, I've been yeah. complaining to you about taxes and money stuff, which is not a, I get to do this. That's a, I have to do. No, that sucks. I have to I, go to the bank again. I got a light email about tax stuff yesterday and almost broke down in tears. No. And it just occurred to me that taxes is like two months away. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's far away. Mm -hmm. And even so I was like, oh, it's so long. No, it's I have nightmare. to deal with this. But other than that, I'm like, it's nice that I get to prepare for these things. It's good. I'm happy to be busy. I mean, there's a lot we can't necessarily talk about but there's been a lot of drama in my professional life that's been taking Yeah, you have had a dramatic a dramatic yes. career week. A dramatic, yeah. And it's not like, I hate when people talk about drama, but it's basically just like, um, what can I say that's not bad? I can say it so then it doesn't <laughs> okay. come back to you. But like, I think that there is something about people who work in the arts in an administrative capacity that just like, it's, it's a big mix of like having to do professional things where you really removed- uh, from it with in like a career that attracts a very emotional type of person. It's very that. I'm switching my team. That's what it is, my team. Um, and it's very that of it's impossible in the arts to not have an emotional attachment for a lot of people yes. in a very professional space. Even like working with your friends and stuff like that. When yeah. it's like, no, this is sort of like, this has no emotionality attached to it, but like it's hard to do something in a career sense, but then also be like, but we're but we're friends. I still want to hang out with you. But like this career thing is kind Definitely. of not bringing us closer and there's together. There's a big thing with Americans specifically. Um, if you don't know, if you're new to the podcast, because we've, we've launched season two and we have a lot of new listeners yes! here. Hello, hello. We're Canadian. We're Canadian. We're in um, Toronto. And Americans. I grew up in America, but they, um, unless you're like, no, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. They will really push and push and push. Mm -hmm. And you know that's you know, why we've got the American dream, famously yes. un unproblematic, good concept. Always been great. We're always been great. Mm -hmm. Always will be great, real and good. And if you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. America, America. So just like weird professional stuff. I do think let's give, cause sometimes we give random, just out of pocket career advice. Mm -hmm. But if you just are in your, whatever area you're in, unless this really doesn't identify with you, <laughs> then don't do it. You don't have to listen. Um, but if you have like a performance review or you're talking to your boss or people who are in the industry that you want to be in, I think that there's only things to be gained from being like, I'm careering this year. Yes. I want to do this very specific thing promoted to this kind of position or by the end of yeah. the year, I want to be doing this. Because if you don't verbalize it, Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a lot harder because people can help you, but you need to tell people yeah, that you want these things or they're not going to, and you don't have to be like, I want to be your assistant or whatever, but going yeah. to somebody and being like, I want to, I, I, um, have, I have like a, an event and I hired a stylist, Ooh. but it's our friend, Sydney Connell. And it oh. happened because she was talking to me at her Christmas party and she was like, I want to get more into styling. Yeah. And then later, like three months when I was like, oh, I want to pay someone, but I don't want to pay someone like, but it's so stressful to be like. To I, find someone who like understands who you. Who I trust and, and all like this trust, stuff. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm going to ask Sydney, but like, I wouldn't have done that. If she hadn't said that. Yeah. And it no, wasn't like I really she was saying like, I want you, can yeah. you hire me? She was just like, this is where I'm at. Yeah. No, it's good. I honestly think that like, it's, and we've talked about this before, but I think just like saying out loud what you want and what you plan to do really does make it happen in a way that like, I think on TikTok, they make it sound really woo woo when yeah. it's like, two, say two, your two, manifestations out loud. In the mirror. It's like, no, tell people. Yeah. Like tell people, like say it out loud and like make it sound real to yourself. Cause then you'll believe it's real. Definitely. Yeah. And it's also like, I, I do think that like anytime it's, uh, I feel like your career life has been very crazy this month. Mine has been less crazy. Uh, where was I going with that? Well, it ebbs and flows, right? Because <laughs> no, like, this is the thing. Because when in something December, happens, you were so fucking busy. And I kept being like, you want to see a movie? 
And I was like, yes. You're like, I want to see a movie. I, I can't. Movie, well, I want die. to. But no, I think it's um, it, it's kind of like anytime you get something good happening, there's like just fallout. Like it, it yes. you know what I mean? Like anything in your life, I think it's not even just necessarily career stuff, but it's like particularly with professional stuff, when you achieve something, when you get something or like, you know, even with like getting any sort of like increased popularity too is like just a, like a, a nightmare. Well, in you, a you lot of view ways. it through a growth mindset. Yeah. Because we all do because tech and capitalism has melted our brains. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why like a lot of social media platforms suck now because they're focused on getting more and more users as opposed to creating a good platform for yeah, the current it's users. it's a nightmare. Um, so when you have an increased popularity or increased anything in your professional space, I mean, if you're online or you're in the arts, an increased like visibility, mm -hmm. um, your brain goes into panic mode. A, because change is horrifying mm -hmm. and B because you know that it's not sustainable and, and it shouldn't be yeah. sustainable. And being perceived is one of the greatest It's a nightmare. Like it's, it's actually a nightmare. And to it's be the perceived. same as like also like when you get promoted, then you have more responsibilities and you have to shift everything in your life around. Like yeah. it just feels like you're constantly change doing Change is like, really horrifying yeah. to people as well. Yeah. Like if, even if you're working in like finance, but like an increased promotion or whatever mm -hmm. means that like your life is changing and you can't control that but you can yeah. never control it but you're just experiencing an event that is like the manifestation of those changes I feel like I have a lot of friends right now who are dealing with like a really specific problem of like because I have a lot of really smart friends I'll brag my friends yeah. are smart and you're awesome a smart and person beautiful. yeah they're smart awesome beautiful people and a lot of them are at this precipice where it's like I can start making a ton of money and have a really cool job at the at the will of sacrificing basically everything else in my life. Yeah. Like it's saying like, I have no social life. I have no boundaries, like blah, 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 blah. But like I could be making a really sweet paycheck. I it's have a, a really cool position. It's problem in the arts as well. It's like, huge in the arts. no um, set hours, even if you're working in a job with set hours. Mm -hmm. No, and this is like, that's another thing that I've been like, you know, it's it's hard to explain to people. It's like I on paper work 20 hours a week. Yeah. But realistically I'm working. Yeah. Uh, like, pretty much all the time. Well, if you're an actor as well, we've talked about this where it's like, you are not only auditioning, you're preparing for auditions or callbacks mm -hmm. with no promise of payment, Yeah. period. Mm -hmm. Also like you're going, if they're in, here's a fun fact about Toronto, any casting house in the most inaccessible <laughs> in place. Insane place. <laughs> but they're all, there's like eight different ones and they're all yeah. in different insane places. But I will say like to the credit of being something like an actor, I do feel like it's kind of written into the contract where it's like- Oh, totally. I feel like if you're working just like a government job or something, you want to be able to just have a life outside of that. But to move totally. up, you kind of like, you get this bigger paycheck, but then your hours expand so much that you're basically getting the same like quote unquote hourly rate. When it comes down yeah. to it a lot of the time, which is just like, it's such a failure of capitalism and such an, um, like, an in, like impossible it's weird decision. And I think it is ultimately good that people are thinking about this. I think that that's one of the positives of the pandemic. I think a lot of things that were bad came out of the pandemic, mass graves. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> All sure. All that stuff. Um, just a few. But things. it made people like really take stock. And I think a lot yeah. of people were like, I want to have a life. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the thing that's really fucked up about these positions where you're working in an office environment, but you're asked to work beyond nine to five because the very reason you get a job with hours that are defined is so that you have hours off work that are mm -hmm. defined. Yeah. Like if you're freelance or like you said, if you're an actor, that comes with the territory. Yeah, it's a bit of a contract. Yes, of understanding like, yeah. also it's the same thing when people are like, you, you know, actors get paid a shit ton of money and you're like, yeah, and then you don't work for three months. Yeah. So it's like that is all built in, right? Of like you're it's going to be inconsistent and it's going to be a lot of work and then no work, all that stuff. But I'm like, if I'm getting a nine to five, I'm not going to fucking work outside of work hours because I got a nine to five. But it's yeah. that's not the reality of it. No, truly. Capitalism is bad. Um, we saw six. We saw six. Six. OK, I have to say I kind of well, also Carly took me to six. Thank you, Carly. Yes. Thank you, Julia. We saw six at Mervish. Um, Mervish. Mervish is Broadway of the North. Broadway of the North. It's Toronto's musical theater it's, or whatever. Yeah, it's a big theater company. It's yeah, like it's yeah. like the big theaters here. Here. In Toronto. The big, um, the big houses. Yeah, the girl who plays Anne Boleyn. She reached was out incredible. to me. She was phenomenal. And I ran into our good friend Griffin Toplinski today. <gasps> oh my gosh. At a callback. Oh, amazing. I was like, I saw Anya, because when we went to six, we saw Griffin's partner, Anya. And Anya listens to the podcast. Um, 
And I was like, I saw Anya at six. And, and he was like, yeah, what did you think of six? And I was like, um, it was really good. I, the, I got invited by the girl who plays Anne Boleyn and he was like, she's so funny, really, really funny. And I was like, I know she is. Like the girl, who, the choices that Julia made playing Anne Boleyn were phenomenal. No, she was fantastic. She did like this very, um, like just kind of like deadpan thing that I really enjoyed. Yeah, it was very like um, valiumed up. Marilyn Monroe a little bit, yeah. but not she also but just had like a fabulous voice. She did this real raspy thing that yeah. I loved. Yeah. Um, it, but honestly, I didn't really think I would like it. No, we went that in much. as not six detractors, but just like, if you don't know what six is, it's a musical. It's an expanded fringe show, I believe, from the West End, London Town. London. And it's basic, it basically is a concert in a way that tells the story of Henry VIII's six wives. Yes. Each wife gets a song and they're competing basically to see who had the worst go of it with him and they win the, the leading lady yeah. or whatever. But basically it's just like every single, it's like cats basically in the way where they're like, they go to the front of stage and they're like, here's my name and here's my thing. Yeah, it's or cats for pop stars. Definitely. But no, and they're all dressed like pop stars. They got these fun outfits. But um, it also was like an hour long, which I, I just love a show Did that's under 90 minutes. Did not its welcome. I loved it. Um. It was just like, we went it was in a as, lot of fun. Yeah, we went in just kind of being like, it'll be fine. Like, I yeah. didn't think I was going to like it. I'm very, recently I've been very um, fatigued by a lot of musical theater. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw the new Mervish season, but there's not a single show in the new season of Mervish shows that is not previously based on existing IP. It's just a bummer. It's like Moulin Rouge That's and The Lion King or whatever, which is like, they're good shows or whatever, but it's just like, there's nothing new. Like, not even yeah. Waitress or whatever, which is based on a movie, but like, but like is still yeah, at least like or a like bit what more hairspray original. would be yeah. like it's based on a movie, but like is it really? I don't yes. know. Yeah. Um. So I was feeling just very much like this is very commercial. Like I'll have fun for sure. It'll be fun, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm really gonna like it. And then the lights went down, and they all were backlit. Oh, the backlighting does something. So it's to just you. it's just like poof, <laughs> bah, bah. <laughs> divorced, bing ba, beheaded, beheaded. died. Bah, bah. Divorced, Ooh. beheaded, da, da. survived. It was that's and it's like they're all back. So good. And we were both just like, <gasps> and everyone was so talented. It's the thing of they like, all had incredible voices. Oh, it was so amazing dancers, <sighs> amazing voices. Yeah, it was so nice. It's the same thing with Wicked of like, it's nice when all the main characters are just incredibly talented women. Yes. Like it just fills such a void. Everybody was yeah. phenomenal. It did not overstay its welcome. It was a party. Mm -hmm. Everyone was having so much fun. It was nice to just see like yeah. the crowd was going wild. It also, if really anybody fun. from Mervish is listening, we want tickets to Wicked. We want tickets to Wicked. We'll do a video. We of, will do we'll a do dedication. Anything. We'll do a we, podcast. We want, we'll do anything. We want to see Wicked, we want to see Wicked when so it comes bad. to Mervish. Okay? We want to see Wicked. Please. We'll, I'm we'll not do above whatever. shamelessly begging. All I want <laughs> is Wicked and sheer text. Oh yeah, I'm still on sheer, sheer text. text. But seriously, it's perfect. We're doing witches. We'll do it. Th Come on, Mervish. Come on. Please let us see Wicked. But it was on Galentine's Day as well. So afterwards we went down to like the lobby and just like had little cupcakes and we ran yes. into friends. And the cupcakes had this uh, bright purple icing, which I think made me quite ill. <laughs> yeah, no, but it was, honestly, but I have worth never, it. and not to be like, I don't like sugar, <laughs> but like I like sugar. Yeah. But I took sugar a bite girl. of that. Okay, and I was like, holy fuck. Yeah, it was crazy. It I made me ate feel the whole like thing, of course. Oh, yeah. No, I felt for crazy. For sure. Let's make <laughs> make no mistakes. I had the whole cupcake. <laughs> I didn't stop eating it, but I was like, it was whoa. Me Ill. <laughs> yeah. Six was good, whatever, blah, blah, blah. What else are we talking about? Oh my God. Um, Wicked trailer. Wicked trailer. Are we talking about Wicked, Wicked trailer? Here's the thing, and I get a lot of comments on this YouTube video that I've made about Ariana Grande because I am an Ariana Grande truther. I think that. Although I'm not condoning cheating, I think if she, I think that people care about it way more because they don't like her. I think that what she's done is a very typical theater girl move where it's like- you Cheating you, on your husband with a tenor. Yeah, <laughs> cheat on your husband with a we, tenor. Look, anytime you've been in a musical theater environment, you see some guy who's not that attractive, but then he sings and he's really good. Mm -hmm. And you know that Ethan Slater, AKA SpongeBob must be really good. Yeah. Because- to pull a girl while playing Bach. That's crazy. The big dick energy you have to have while playing Bach. <laughs> you know what? Like, yeah, to pull Ariana The twink too. character. Yeah. Like I had on my 2020 bingo card, I was like, Bowen Yang is going to play Bach. Like I thought it was for sure going to be that, not SpongeBob. And also Ethan Slater got 
hired in SpongeBob the Musical right out of school with like no representation. So, so you, you know, know he's, he's, you know he's fucking good. good. Also, what did drive me crazy was that there were these clips going around. I'm not condoning. I'm just no. saying. No, this we're is not what condoning this. This is do. just what musical theater girls do. I've they, never cheated. They I ruin. No, I've never cheated. I would never cheat. But musical theater girls yeah. will ruin their own life. They'll ruin their the own life. At the promise of the worst head they've ever received from a tenor. Yeah. Yeah. Because they can only get, ha! It's the Aaron Tevedification. Exactly. But I do think like, uh, I will say this to Ethan Slater's credit. People just don't understand like musical theater in the way of like what is seen as impressive versus not. Yes. So these clips were going around of him as Spongebob and people were like, this is so embarrassing. How could she ever touch it? And I'm like, no, like if you are a musical theater girl, this, this is does- insanely impressive. Well, that's the thing. It's like to throw your whole cock and balls into the role of SpongeBob <laughs> and not care. And not care. And, and just be, be like, really I'm going to be it? really good in it. And yeah. you're still the lead, which is crazy. People yes. do not give enough credit for how fucking hard it is to be in a Broadway show, period. Mm-hmm. To do it every fucking night and you're SpongeBob, that's really and hard. Doing- <laughs> <laughs> I'm SpongeBob. Again. Yeah. I will keep saying this. To leave your child is an act. That would make me insane. And I too would do it as wife did if that ever happened to me. If I'd be like, you made me at a baby and now I'm going to the Globe and Mail to destroy your relationship. <laughs> like I am going to tell the Daily Mail all of your deepest, deepest darkest yeah. secrets. Yeah. But I also as think- As is her right and we're, we support her. Yes. But you can see from like, uh, this is my greatest, greatest conspiracy theory about the whole thing where Bowen Yang and Ariana Grande became really, really good friends on the set of Wicked. And Aww. Ariana Grande would constantly post videos of Bowen, like where she's doubled over, basically like laughing in the background while he's doing something that's kind of funny. And Bowen mm. Yang is very funny, but it'd just be him like, it wasn't this, but it'd be the equivalent of like making your straw wrapper a mustache. Like it's not that funny, but yeah. it would destroy her. <laughs> and this leads to my, the first part of this theory that Ariana Grande is as a theater kid trapped in like a famous pop star person's body. Mm -hmm. So she's never around anybody with actual personality. So when she's around somebody with actual personality, charisma, very funny, like Bo and Yang, she's like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Like, or um, the Jonathan Bailey who plays Fierro, again, a theater person, oh my God, personality. She's married to this, like at the time, just like a real estate agent from LA. You just know that he's got no thoughts in his yeah, head. You know he's, he's very boring, boring yeah. which is fine. Boring is good. But he, yeah. then to be a- away from everyone else, around people who are actually exciting and interesting, to see somebody be very good in a role and also somebody who for sure actually has a personality that's, and is good at the that thing that crazy. you care about, yeah. that's what you're going to do. I don't, I don't condone it, but I think that personality plays a lot more into this than people really want to admit. And I feel like also being in a musical is like, getting like toxoplasmosis from mm-hmm. your cat's piss. Like it's very much like <laughs> this into the woods cast is going to be a family forever. And it's like, no, you're, it you're, literally you're touching people that you wouldn't touch. It you're rots out your cast brain and being like, like, guys, let's, Every year, we're going to come back to this Denny's. We're going to go back to this Denny's and, and we're going to do Last Midnight. Like, let's, you I know. know what I mean? It really does. Like, it, it's camp, but everybody is an attention seeker yes. and- all the, like, you know? Yeah. And have you, and like, also- you've met every, uh, like, we've both met mildly famous people. Yes. And more often than not, they're very miserable and have nothing to say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I think for her to be around, like, people who are insane, but yeah, very it's full exciting, of personality, exciting it's very exciting. Fun for her. No, I do think that that is, uh, like, I, I think I think you're on them. And money. I think that she, think that whole money. thing in the Wicked trailer to bring it back, when she just goes like, you're green. I was watching it with Reese and we were both like, she's so good. I like, think she's it's so gonna, good. I, my problem with the Wicked movie is why it shouldn't are we be two parts? Into two yeah. parts. I was so excited. Because who's going to see part two? Because presumably it's, it's going to be nothing. act one and act two, right? They'll do Defying Gravity again. Yeah, they have to. They have to. But I will say, everyone's talking about Cynthia Erivo's riff at the end of the trailer, which I am going to come out and say, I liked it. Okay. What did you want her to do? The Adina Menzel riff that uh, we've heard a million times. She switched it up. She's a, a, and I'm to be fair, a Cynthia Erivo defender. Yeah, I am too. She's godlike in my mind. There was a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, somehow my YouTube um liked videos got kind of queued up to my like living room TV when Horrifying. we were yeah. So um, all my liked videos started playing after the. There were like a couple of people over, and um, my roommate was playing um just like a video, and then the next one came on. It was just Cynthia Erivo doing uh, "I'm Here" from the color purple, 
And, then and I, I know the exact video. And it's amazing. I'm but then, gonna dance. Oh. <laughs> It sounded kind of like Whitney Houston, does, but you know what I mean? Breath, like, but it's she's so good. So good. But then that ended, and then another video sent the Aravo doing I'm Here from the Color Purple Plane. <laughs> and then uh, my roommate started skipping them, and it was just Cynthia Aravo after Cynthia Aravo for like eight videos in a row. Yes. So that's where I'm at with Cynthia Aravo. Yeah, you're kind of, I, and I love her. I really do love her. She's but amazing. this is how I am, and even though she's famous, but like I am a Sutton Foster defender. Yeah. I am too. Like, I, I love her. Like I, there's a video of her singing. It's a bootleg on YouTube of her singing. I get a kick out of you in Ugh, love that. anything goes the revival on the West end, not Broadway. <laughs> and I will watch that shit once a, once a month. Love that. It's my daily diagnosed. It's my daily prescribed Sutton Foster. It's important. Bootleg. I thought the riff, w I wasn't, the internet was, was concerned about it. Here, I'm going to play it. Yeah. So and we're going to we all... say like, basically at the end of defying gravity, Adina Menzel, when she's singing, it goes like, oh, down. But Cynthia Arrivo did a different thing. But what people don't understand, because they're not heavily entrenched in different parts of the musical theater world, we've all watched like, wick it's like wicked compilations of every single Broadway member who played Alphaba. So they all do different riffs. Okay. Oh, I'm not afraid. It's the wizard who should be afraid of me. It sounds good. I think about like, what did you want? They just want the same. I think people are oftentimes very reticent to um, change, but I think that this is a very promising trailer. It doesn't shy away from the fact that it's a musical. Yes. Um, Thank God. Yeah, Literally adopting a musical. They tried to make it look like a teen drama. I know. Like I God. just couldn't do that. Marketing. But after that, I have been listening. After that trailer dropped. I think it will be good. I think it will be funny. After the trailer dropped, I just started listening to the original cast recording of Wicked and Fuck That Musical. is so fucking good. It's so good. Okay, let's talk about the Salem Witch Trials. What we're here to yes! do. Yes! Okay. All right. So today. What are we talking about today? So we're talking about like common misconceptions. So things that... Uh, are kind of in the lore of witch trials, but might not be 100% true. In fact, they might not be real at all. <gasps> Much like a misconception. So we're going to get back right, back, right, right into it. <laughs> we're going to get right into it. Okay. So first one is witches were burned at the stake. Harley, Wrong bit. Did, did you believe this? Did you ever believe this at one point? Until I researched the Salem witch trials for this podcast, I thought they were burned at the stake. I feel like it's very, it's classic imagery of getting burned at the stake. That's the UK witch trial, Yes, right? they only yeah. burned witches in medieval Europe and not in Salem or America at all. Um, and also a fun fact I learned um, about the witch trials when I was researching this is that they, well, they, they hung witches. We know this. However, it wasn't like- Hanged. Hanged, sorry. They hanged witches. <laughs> You know what? I had a moment where I thought of which one was right to and use. And you made choice. You made the wrong one. Yeah, I do that. I do that often. Yeah. Oh well, that's fine. But so they uh, apparently these hangings weren't like break your neck hangings. They were like slow strangulations. That's um, rough. I, I couldn't figure Another out. Another fun fact that I learned is you the F slur for gay people is the same as um, it's like for a. a for like kindling, like yeah. a, a back, a thing of sticks, mm -hmm. and they call gay people the F slur because they used to burn them at the feet of witches, just kind of as like a separate thing. They're like, well, we also have to burn the gay person. I did hear. I remember Isn't hearing that horrifying this in like middle school. That's too bad. Every once in a while, and it's I know it was bad to be gay basically any time except for now, and even now it's not that great mm -hmm. in a lot of parts of the world. Yeah, but then you hear like really bad stuff, and you're like, oh, Jesus geez. Christ, jeez, Louise. And to that, I say, geez, Louise. And to that, I say, geez, Louise. That's what happens whenever anybody says something out of pocket. When somebody says, that's so gay, I go, geez, Louise. Geez, Louise. Do you even realize what you say? That's so girl wearing a top as a skirt or a skirt as a top. <laughs> when that you say gay, do you realize what you say? No. Yeah. Knock it off. I told you that my high school in um, Canada, when it, we moved here, had a lot of gay people in it. Congrats. Um, I know. And Mine had the most. Probably. It was a musical theater Actually, school. Actually, statistically the most. Cool. Sorry, I just had to one-up you there. That's fine. You're doming me with all the gay people at your school. <laughs> um, and instead of saying, that's so gay, people would say, it gets better. It gets better. <laughs> Which is fucking funny. Like, it's funny. <laughs> that's instead funny. Of being like, you know, just being like, hey, instead of calling somebody gay derogatorily, being like, hey, it gets better. Do you remember the no hate campaign where a bunch yes, of with celebrities- Yes, the, the, the duct tape. That's yeah, me about the Salem witch trials. Yeah. Guys, no hate. No hate. No hate. No hate to the witches. So 
another misconception is that the witch trials were commonplace in the colonies. Colonies. The colonies. Colonies. Uh, With the colonies sauce. Yes. (laughs) So they were not common. Mm. It was really weird that the witch trials just came up. That means that like when people got word of Salem, they're like, Jesus Christ. So yeah, pretty much. So basically what happened was like you could be charged as a witch in the colonies, but there was like a legal procedure that you had to go about it. Mm -hmm. And Salem just threw that out the window. They were like, actually, no, we're just going to do this. Uh, And we hear you. And we, it's like that. Um, it's, that video of Vanessa Hudgens when she's mad that Coachella gets canceled yeah. because of COVID. People are going to die. But that's like inevitable? Inevitable? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this on live. That's my <laughs> like, favorite part of the video. When she says, maybe I shouldn't be saying yeah, this on Instagram sure. live. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, for she sure. She goes, I get it. I respect it. And people are going to die. But that's like inevitable? inevitable? That's the Salem witch trial. That's like that's you Vanessa maybe Hudgens say to your best ben, friend. No, m- not on live. <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens fan cast as John Hathorne. Oh, awesome! In the Salem witch trials, that's in that in our movie. I love her. She sings Sneaker Night. She's in the middle. Sneaker Night. <laughs> I love Sneaker Night. <laughs> Sneaker Night is such a fucking good song. Uh, my bestie Lizzie loves Sneaker Night, and she would play it at every party forever. It's Honestly, a great fucking does. song. It's, it's a great fucking song. Sneaker Night. So they weren't common in the so colonies. They weren't common in the colonies, and so you could be charged as a witch, but there was like a legal procedure, and Salem just decided we're not going to do all that, and they just let everyone into the court, and everyone was flinging out accusations, which is kind of like horrific, but also kind of funny. It's, it's funny like a now. little. It's funny it's now. For fun. sure, wasn't because funny it's, then. You're like, that's obviously a bad idea. Like, I don't know why you think that would be a good idea because it's not. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I remember when I was researching for this podcast, there was a lot of talk of like one of the reasons it got so out of hand is because it wasn't very common. Yeah. So then it's like once they started finding confirmed, quote unquote, you know what I mean, like witches. witches. Um. It became really terrifying because it's almost this idea of being like, um. We don't do any of the upkeep. Yeah. So it's like there's so many witches here and they've all permeated the community because we haven't been doing any witch trials. Yeah, like, oh, we've let the witches get too far. And um, as we've talked about this prior, but the difference between UK witches and American witches is that like American witches were a lot more normal. Mm -hmm. Like they weren't like eating babies. They just like were in cahoots with the devils and would pinch 11 year olds sometimes. Crazy. So because they weren't like so out of the realm of possibility. They were a lot scarier because it felt a lot it more like real. It could be anyone. Yes, yes. Basically what happened with the witches in Salem is like, it's like when you let your pansexual friend into you, your friend group and then it becomes a polycule. And that happens a lot to you? And that happens a lot to me. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and let's sit with that for a bit. <laughs> no, that's never happened to me. But that's it kind could. of what they felt like. There's one witch in Salem and now they all became witches. Yeah, so it's talking, like, you know, cahooting. it's that very famous thing that, I mean, I didn't go through, but I think a lot of queer people have gone through where it's like they have one friend who's gay and then they come up to their parents as gay and they're like, is that person making you gay? No, it's just gay people cling to each other. Yeah, I found I'm a closeted lesbian. So obviously I, su- I, I sought found out- the other the, closeted lesbians. Yeah, I found the <laughs> gayest man. That's my favorite. I think my friend Patrick, he, he would not mind me saying this. We were very, very good friends in middle school and he's, is gay. he is gay and okay. was gay. Like, you know what I mean? And like, good for him. He was in the closet, but immediately, even from that age, I was like, I, th- I know him to be gay. And I remember <laughs> every morning we would always like go come to school early um, and he would just always be like, oh, Jennifer Lawrence is so hot. I find Jennifer <laughs> Lawrence so, she is she's super so hot. hot. We were like, Okay. <laughs> okay, Patrick. Thank you so much. Cool. <laughs> you know, That's the really the daily cool, allotted <laughs> compulsive heterosexuality so he feels safe. He's so But like she's it so was hot. Maryland, right? So he was in a tense environment. Like him doing that I think <laughs> was important to him. That's really funny. Yeah. Yeah, so basically that definitely added to the fact that like we weren't seeing this. This was kind of a special event. Nay, the Super Bowl for the colonies. Yes, exactly. Taylor Swift was there. Taylor Swift was there <laughs> with Blake Lively. It's just like hard to think even like imagining leaving the colonies and then coming back like three years later and being like, guys, what? And that would be me. I take my first vacation in years. And you have to get on that little rickety ass boat. I get a rickety ass boat. I'm going away. I come back. Like, and guys. they've killed all my besties. Not on my watch. That's no. all I want to say. Okay, thank you. That was you. like when I went to... um. Mexico for the holidays um and then there was like that really problematic show that happened at 
comedy bar. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I leave the city for one fucking and night. this happens. And you guys run a problematic comedy show. Guys, uh, stop. Yeah. So other things. Confessed witches were executed. Yeah, so we've talked about this. We've talked about this a lot. They were not. If you confessed, you pretty much got off. Yeah, it wasn't great because you still remained in prison. Which is crazy. Um, which is wild. But you wouldn't die unless you died in prison, which yeah. could happen. Um, it's really weird to think about because at this point prior, basically the precedent was if you just don't um, admit to being a witch, then you won't be executed. Just generally, like not a hundred percent, but that was the generally accepted precedent of like, you're not a witch, so you don't admit to it and it's fine. Um, you might be like charged on witchcraft, but you would be okay. Mm -hmm. So, but Tichuba very uh, like acutely kind of took stock of the situation and understood that like the big thing with the Puritans, the Puritans are all about like redemption, very much that sect of Christianity of being like, you can be a horrendous person, mm -hmm. but if you admit to your sins, then it's fine. Yeah. So she wasn't Puritan by birth because she was a slave. Mm -hmm. um, but she she picked up on the vibes. Yes, exactly. So it's mm -hmm. like, it makes sense that somebody who's coming into this religion more so, um, living with the pastor of the town or whatever, yeah. is, um, picking up on it more in adult life and becoming, she was very devout. Like she loved, she went to church all the time, all these things. Um, understanding the religion and texts that governed this society to a greater extent than a lot of the people who were born into it. Yeah. And being like, oh, well, I'm, I should confess. And obviously I should confess. Yeah, like, she I, understood the rules. She understood the rules. And it's not like, maybe she could have been conniving and being like, oh, well, I obviously have to admit that I, I'm a witch or they're going to fucking kill me. But I also am, um, I don't know where I found this because it was so long ago that we'll literally never know. Yeah. But it could also just be like, she's like, well, I know how this society works and I subscribe to the very beliefs. Yeah. So even if I do die, I want to die with a clean conscience. Yeah. So that's why like so many people admitted to doing it. First of all, because they're like gaslighting you. You're on the stand and they're like, but you're a witch. You're a witch. Oh, you're a witch. You're a witch. And yeah. eventually you're like, ah, I don't, I, I don't know. No. Um, but then also it's a society that's built so much. You're just so used to getting in trouble now and being like, yeah. repent. But that's not like what the law precedent and it's, it's was like the Catholic the confessional of it all too. Yes, where it's just that. like, if you just go in, obviously they weren't Catholic, but like, it's very much like this idea of you can basically do anything. Do, you can do anything you want, but if you apologize you for it- You say, sorry God, then, then it's forgive it's fine. You. It's, it's very, it's, it's wild when you yeah. actually think about it. <laughs> it's crazy. Like- to, yeah. I mean, it's like there's all those cases of like satanic panic in the 70s yeah. because you get the kids alone and you're like, so which person at your school is a devil worshiper? Yeah. And they're like, no one. And they're like, mm, but do you think it's maybe Miss Anne? Maybe. And then the kid's like, I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Like no, it's it was really a lot crazy. of that. And you're being, like you said, there's no law involved. Like they're doing these at the town hall or the fucking pub. Yeah. Like people are, ha are on their, having their buffalo chicken wings <laughs> wrap their dip yeah exactly they're yeah. having their like they're tucking into their ranch dressing yeah um but it's also this time like if you are basically being like berated it's like illegal questioning by the police too but all yeah. of a sudden also what's happening is anytime you look at these girls who are claiming you're bewitching them they like flop on the ground like yeah. unless you're an incredibly mentally strong person a lot of people would just i would crumble i mean yeah. like, i'd be like i guess maybe it's stressful. It could it's be. A stressful especially environment. Especially when you, once you introduce the idea that you can be a witch and not know it, which is just oh, evil to crazy. introduce it to this. But they're like, how do you not know you're a witch? And then I'd yeah. be like, you're hey, can you prove that you checkmate. Don't know? Can you prove that you don't know? Can you prove so that you So you are? agree. So you agree. You agree you that you're, you're really a witch. Pretty. You think you're really pretty. You think yeah. you're really a witch. Guess what? I don't recall. I don't recall. I don't recall. I don't recall. No, the whole thing is uh, pretty crazy, which leads me to the next misconception, which is that uh, in... Salem, they would use the float test, mm -hmm. which is another thing that they did in Europe. Okay, made famous by Monty Python. And the made Holy famous Grail. by Monty Python. Well, they they did the they did a weight test or something. Yes, but I feel like they talked about because because yeah, witches are float. made of. Why do witches float? Yeah, it, it's because witches are made of wood and they weigh the same as a duck or something. Yeah, like that. that was a, the Monty Python logic. <laughs> exactly. So basically what they would do in Europe was that they would- Talk uh, about Monty Python a crazy amount on this I love podcast. this. <laughs> 
We're Monty Python girls. Exactly. We're Monty, well, Monty's Pythons. We're, yeah, we're the, yeah, we're the Pythonettes. Pythonettes. But so the way they do this is if you were accused of being a witch, they'd tie up your hands and feet. Only fair. Then they'd throw you into water. Only fair. And if you floated, you were a, a witch. And if you sunk... You were innocent, but which dead. Is, but 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 the thing and isn't is, so that isn't that what being a woman is? That's the fucking that's the fucking monologue at the end of you, Barbie that you die. There's no way. there's no right way to be a woman because either you're a witch and you get killed, or you fucking drown for being a woman because your hands are bound. This is the thing. So like uh, the sources I was reading were like, yeah, they get fished out and then they were let to go free because they sunk to the bottom. And I was like, and and it said like there were no reported deaths. So I was like, yeah, Why obviously would they wouldn't they have reported, reported it? it. And I don't mean to be like revisionist history here but I'm but like why not no way like what do you like no way you're throwing you're tying up women throwing them into the lake and then saying oh no one drowned. Wait, wait guys wait guys we should fish them out this was awesome no and they're like well all right I know it's like sorry if you're wearing a corduroy dress and you sink to the bottom and you live quote unquote you know what I mean where it's yeah. like if you wear your beautiful chiffon gown to look beautiful and you float well that's disgusting. the thing it's like you're probably going to sink anyway because your hands are bound and your feet are bound. Which unless you're floating on your back, which would be really hard. But then you get murdered anyway. Like, it's just... Well, no, I think you... Like, I think the human body usually floats. Well, eventually, but yeah. not... But that's when the body gets waterlogged. Like, that's people crazy. sink to the bottom. Uh, like what happened on Christopher Walken's boat. Yeah, seriously. He knows something about the death of Natalie Wood. I actually think that's crazy. The fact that Christopher Walken has those answers and we're just not. Yeah. We're not on We get to watch Christopher that. Walken sing, Edna, you're timeless to me. And we go, I don't care about this, Chris. <laughs> what, I, what happened, what to, happened Natalie to Natalie Wood? Wood? What happened to Natalie Wood? The amount of air in your lungs is the difference between floating and not floating, at least in seawater. Wow. So you go. <gasps> Or you go. <laughs> so they didn't do that in Salem. In Salem, they did that in medieval Europe. Yeah, it seems which like in Salem so they just did like a really crazy cross examination, yeah, and then so they just decided. In Salem, it was the Lord's Prayer. They'd make you say the Lord's Prayer, and if you didn't right, say, if you it stumbled over it. Yes, and they would also look for a witch's teat. Yes. So it's it's too which bad. is just a witch's mark. It's just a little mole. I know yes. another thing too because that the big problem. With the Salem witch trials, not the big. There's a lot of problems. People died. Yes, but a real thing that w the reason why a lot of people died is the court, quote unquote, and then the, like the the actual examination. But then even later, the court that sentenced these women to death um, accepted spectral evidence, which we've talked about. Where it's like somebody could say, "I saw Blair's specter," crazy, and she pinched me, and they have to go, "Okay." We accept that. I feel like this is like, I feel like we're hitting on something really interesting. And I'm not sure if like my thesis is fully formulated, but I feel like there's a really interesting difference between like the logic of the English and European witch trials and the logic of the American witch trials. Yes. And like what it says about societal beliefs at the time. Yeah. Because I think it's so interesting that like a lot of the Salem witch trial stuff was just kind of like... It was almost like they didn't have all the information that they kind of formulated in Europe. Mm -hmm. So it was just sort of like they were saying anything. Whereas like, and, and it is I, weird though yeah. that like, I think the reason we're all so enamored with the witch trials, um, besides the fact that we're just kind of enamored with horror to begin with, yes. like just horror shows and crazy things. Yeah. Is, I mean, maybe the inexplicableness of it, of like what caused a town to basically collectively lose the plot for a year. But I think the thing that is very horrifying to me and the reason why I think the Salem witch trials is girl history like girls are very into it besides the fact that all the main characters are women which is just fun mm -hmm. um is also that you can't you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't in both senses like in the UK you either sink to the bottom of the damn river and you're innocent or you get burned because you float mm -hmm. or you're you rot in jail in Salem which they would call like hell for the living because it's an old timey jail That's surprise crazy. surprise the prison system what a nightmare yeah or you get hanged like yeah there's no winning and from the second that you are accused you're fucking done and it's also like you're never not going to have not been accused of being a witch from that point on yeah like it's such a mark upon you well that's the big thing where it's bridget bishop who is the first person who is hanged in the salem witch trials 
the reason she was tried is because she was accused of witchcraft previously. And she was absolved on that account, but those accusations follow you forever, yeah. which is the whole reason why people compare it to cancel culture, which is insane. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> not but, the same. You know, th you are that forever, period. Um, yeah. And the reason they tried her first is because they knew that it would, it basically to warm the jury up. Yeah. Be like, you guys, I mean, it's not a jury, but it's like a, a panel. It was more like parliamentary because England was still, mm -hmm. it was still a colony of the empire yeah. or whatever. Um, but to basically be like, okay, well, this one's really fucking easy. So we can kind of practice round on her with her life. Yeah. And then work from there. It's really wild to think about. Yeah. I really, I really want to keep building this kind of thesis. Well, I feel like time. this is maybe our like, you know, our goal at the end of it, because I, I think it's so interesting. And I do think it's crazy that just like too bad if you have a skin tag, you know, and like, I do. You have, that's like a, who amongst us teach. doesn't have a skin tag. Yeah. So basically they didn't do Harry the Styles test. has a third nipple. So I did know that actually. He'd be absolutely toast. You no, know, that's a, that's a teat. He'd be walking up to the the gallows in his yeah. little sequined suit with the big oversized Take collar. Our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy Hello name? Hello be thy name. Hello be thy name. Do 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 do. Uh, anyway, what the fuck are we talking about? What's do? What's the next misconception? Oh yeah, um, big misconception is that only women were accused of witchcraft mm -hmm. in the Salem witch trials. It was actually about a 75-25 split. Yeah, that was a real interesting thing that surprised me. Obviously, like you kind of know because of the crucible. Um, the John Proctor of it all, which is mm. so wild to think about. It's just such an exempt, like it just exemplifies like who is telling these stories that Seriously. like- Why does uh, he get a play? That's what I'm saying. Why it's does he like, get a play? Like it's comparatively, like statistically it should be about literally anyone else, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's about him. What I found really interesting though was that uh, often men who defended women or like yeah. anyone in their lives, they'd be accused of witches. And also there was this whole idea that- uh, you could pass witchcraft through like family members. Right. You could inherit so, it. Yeah. This was a big reason too. So it's still like old, women's fault. Four year old got um, accused. That's crazy. Sarah Good's daughter. That's not being like Dorothy that's a witch Good too. or Dorcas Good. There's different like. Dorcas. Yeah. Because, Dorothy Dorcas. Because it was like, there's different. If you look at, depending on the thing that, like the uh, source that you use, it's different because it was the fucking past. I'm yeah, sure that's true. somebody said shitty handwriting. And so, yeah, no someone was just like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so drunk on yeah, me. It's, like, it's like, well, if you're a witch, then obviously your daughter's a witch, yes. which is wild to think. Like, there's, there's so much to be said there about like inherited trauma. And like, I know. You it really have, is. Because that's a big thing with like, you know, Christianity. And that's like, like, as like the babe, un yeah. like the child is a clean slate. And they're like, no, no, no. Tra gonna, tra Inherit, trauma can be inherited. Exactly. The body, the body keeps, keeps score. score. The body when keeps we score. saw that person, we had improv oh, rehearsal at Second City God. this week. And there was just a woman reading the body keeps score in the lobby. And it was beautiful. I wish somebody painted a mural of that. Just somebody reading the body keeps score in an improv like facilities lobby. Gorgeous. Yeah. I'm like, this is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I hope you're Working all your trauma out in improv class. Yeah. While also gaining more trauma. You are, certainly will. If any improv guru is teaching your class, they're going to yeah. abuse you. I really, really hope your class is, uh, I was going to say uh, taught by a mentally stable comedian, but that in itself Oxymoron. doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. So yeah, they also, yeah, there were, uh, uh, men were two accused, dogs yeah. also accused. and men. Two dogs, yeah. The dogs were accused. I'm going to do more research because people really wanted to like dig into the dogs of it all. which is know about the dogs. Um, but it was like, the dogs got like shot. It was very sad. Again, this is the whole like Titanic thing of being like, and the dogs survived because it's too sad to even fathom the dogs died. And you're like, bro, <laughs> people died too. Like we're people. The, yeah. the lengths human beings go to separate ourselves from the natural world and it's animals crazy. is it's we it's simply crazy. don't have time to unpack it. No, I've been I, like it's not sad when humans die; it's sad when the animals die. And you're like, like you're an what? animal, bitch. What's wrong with you? You're, you're an first animal. First of all, you're an animal, and also like I'm sorry, I love animals, but like, what do you mean it's not sad when humans die? Yeah, it's very. What's strange. wrong with you? But the dogs, it was again, it was some kind of like inherited thing of like this is a witch and her entire family, including the dog, is yes. a witch. Um, yeah, but Giles Corey got accused and his wife was the one. It, both Giles Corey and John Proctor, I believe, basically got accused um, after their wives, who had already been which accused. Is insane. Um, which is wild. So another misconception, witches were often like herbalists mm -hmm. or uh, women who didn't conform to society, like midwives and stuff like that. I wonder that. if a lot of this is like the misconceptions come from us 
associating the yes. UK witch trials or like the European witch Most trials, Most of them right? are. I think that this is like, if this episode is anything, because this is a bit lighter on info, just to say, like really highlight the things that we kind of think of when we think of Salem and how many of them just didn't happen. It's kind of wild to think about. I think that they- I mean, we even got that email a while ago yeah. saying like, when we think of the Puritans, we think of like black and white pilgrim costumes, but in actuality, like they wore color. Yes. And like even something as simple as that is like mind boggling. That's actually, that's on my list. Oh, really? Because, yeah. Because shout out to Lily who sent us that okay. email. Thanks, Lily. But uh, yeah, this idea that Puritans were like black and email white. Email us at girlhistorians at email gmail.com. Us at girls at girls was really pushed by actually like the British being like, we don't want color, whatever. Yeah. Um, but often like richer Puritans would wear like kind of like colors that you'd like. I mean, and we're not talking, and yeah, we're not talking like a crazy, a neon yeah. fucking yellow zip up hoodie but often like but imagine even, imagine yeah if, uh, whenever we're talking about this i want you to imagine john proctor wearing that purple zip up hoodie that justin bieber wore. yes with like a thrasher t-shirt yeah a th skinny yeah john jeans. proctor yeah the skinny jeans with like the black skinny jeans with the cut in the yeah. knees like five he's minutes of dressed summer like gabe from cobra starship and and uh, yeah and anytime that he enters the building like when he's entering yeah. the pub right mm -hmm. for his trial all of a sudden it's like quiet and everyone's like what and it's rumbling and it's like Popping bottles in the eyes <laughs> like a blizzard. <laughs> when we drink, we do it right. Getting the slizzard. entire court of oyster. Just, yes, are are the members Fucking of LMFAO breaking it down to like a G six? Like a G six. Like a G six. Okay, that's a, a wild voice to do for that. It sounds like your gizmo. <laughs> the what You're is like, he called? Gremlin. gremlin. My gizmo brain is gremlin. melted. I, the Gremlins is, we don't have time to talk about it's how the Gremlins. Gremlins. Blair, why don't you have a voiceover career? <laughs> Slowly reveal to all these impressions. Yeah, you can do, do Cartman again. <laughs> I don't know. Now I feel like it's too much pressure. I auditioned for voiceover. They just never cast me. No, they never cast me either. They never cast me. But that um, makes sense for me. I, this is, look at the note. There's literally, in the way that I speak, not even note <laughs> variation. I feel like I was doing a stitch there actually a little bit. Yes. <laughs> do Cartman. <laughs> no, it's too much pressure. <laughs> do fucking Cartman. Fuck, dude. That's a kill Fuck. shot. That's a kill uh, shot. What's up? I'm Cart... No. No. <laughs> oh, my God. They killed hey. Kenny. Oh, my God. They killed Kenny. Yeah, that's is really that good. good. The first one no, you did... It was better, better in season better. one. The season I, I did one, that one earlier. one that you did was crazy. That was really good. Like, it sounds... In, it sounds oh, my like, God. They killed Kenny. That's bad. Yeah, you're getting there. They killed Kenny. <laughs> Kenny. I, I need to, like, hear It's the raspy... Kenny. Oh, my God. He also doesn't even say that. That's the other kid. Stan says that. Oh, which right. Which I realized it's not even his voice. Whatever. Anyway, I need to have a voiceover career. Please yes. hire me for voiceover. I can do anything. But yeah, so they, um, even poor Puritans would wear like rust and green yeah. and whatever. And also black fabric apparently was one of the most expensive fabrics that you ah. could get. So usually it was only like clergy people, wow. and like lawyers and stuff like that. So it was a big lie. A big lie. Um, but then I think that through the 1600s, there were laws that were kind of introduced. Not laws, but it was Well, like we've talked about like the fashion crimes. So there's that woman who was yes. basically hanged for being a witch on a kind of fashion crimes. of like, Fashion crimes. We wouldn't understand it in today's understanding of like what is conservative or yes. what isn't. But there was like, rent, like a silk scarf is like very promiscuous and well, crazy. And it makes more else. sense because apparently it was the 1650s, I think. There were these like laws introduced that like basically like put limitations on like jewelries and accessories you could wear. Okay. Because it was seen as very sinful to try and appear it's, as it's, though you were richer than yes. you were. Okay. So if quiet I- Quiet luxury, if baby. If I went to Fashion Nova, got a little tiara for myself. No, it's quiet luxury. Like, They're you, like, no, no, where's your Birkin? No, 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 no. You can okay, have a Birkin. No. You can dress like the- like Mary Kate and Ashley, they would have been okay because they're very quiet yes. luxury yes. wearing the row. They're not wearing the Balenciaga sock shoes. If you're wearing the yeah. Balenciaga sock shoes, you're getting hanged for being a witch. And I'm sorry yeah. to say. So I guess like if you were richer, you could have worn a fancy silk scarf. But if you were poorer and it's, you got gifted yeah. like a nice little silk scarf, you couldn't wear it because it'd be like you're trying to look richer than you actually are. We need to instate that, honestly, because the amount of people online who like are wearing like the Louis Vuitton branded everything. Well, and I'm rough. like in... Like, we're in a recession. I don't know. It just doesn't yeah. feel appropriate. Yeah. 
Maybe that's wrong. This is me. This is my Vanessa Hudgens thing being like, no. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this online. No, I I love you got to give it to Vanessa Hudgens. It's good to kind of insinuate that it's OK if people die because you want to go to Coachella. <laughs> We forget that that was about Coachella, which is insane. So it blew my mind that a bunch of people like don't even go to Coachella. They just like take photographs and edit them. So it looks like they're at Coachella. So I'm like, why would I go? I can just edit myself in. Why would I like, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. sounds so tiring in the desert with a bunch of celebrities. Awful. Whatever. So thank you, Lily, for that fact about the period. Yeah, that was a great I actually fact. really didn't know that. Well, they don't even, they didn't even talk about that in the, uh, like, Salem Witch Trials book that I read. I had to look it up afterwards, no. which is like, there's just so much knowledge that you can barely scratch oh the surface God, of everything. Truly. And I think it's like, it's so hard because they just like don't have records of this stuff. I know. And the Puritans like, were very, very um, anal record keepers. Yeah. But it's just, but you know, they didn't have, you they want. didn't have, get dressed with me. No, get they didn't do me. an OOTD, get ready for my witchcraft trial. <laughs> get ready with me to stand accused of witchcraft at the Salem court. Yes. So today started off like any other. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, story time. Story time. This is my silk scarf. <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe what happens next. You won't believe it. L like for part two. Yeah. But it's like they would write, they would keep records on shit. Like we have like basically word for word how all of these trials went down. That's nuts. But like other stuff, we don't we don't know where Abigail Williams went. No, they didn't care about where women. Where did she go? They didn't care about women or fashion. And that's horrifying to think horrifying. about. I'm literally sick to my stomach thinking stick about to somebody going to jail fan. for fashion crimes. So I basically have got one final misconception, uh, which is that the witch hunt took place entirely in Salem, mm. which surprised me because uh, the trials and the executions were in Salem. But the people who were accused of being witches were from mostly like the surrounding area. It's a big, that really leads uh, or lends a lot of validity to the kind of land grab it of really it all. Is There's like the theory that up. the Salem witch trials is um, also partially like it, um, it, it's be because people wanted land from widows and yeah. poor people or whatever. And you could get your land seized if you were in prison. Well, this is the or thing, dead. again, to go back to the difference between uh, the European trials and the American trials is that I feel like the European trials were often a little bit more like, yeah, like you're an herbalist, like you're doing something kind of freaky, like you're pushing we away don't from society. Like that you're doing like, this. Yeah. The American ones were much more political, it seems. Yeah, you know, none of the fun. But so, I mean, um, I did a big ass fucking paper in university for my English minor about the witches in Macbeth. Cool. And just how like, if you look in a lot of, it was about like witches in a lot of Shakespeare work. Yeah. And it's almost always like representation. Like it's always like in like the stage directions being like, there's no, they don't have husbands yeah. or whatever. Like it's very <laughs> funny what people will tell you for free yeah. in those instances where when you think of witches from Europe, it is that misconception, Truly. but true of being like you are unmarried or you have a means of making money mm -hmm. on your own. A lot of it too, which is why when you think of like, even in Wicked, but like our modern idea of a witch of having like a wart or green fucking skin or a big nose yeah. is this whole idea of being like, she doesn't care yeah. about being she doesn't care about pretty. being pretty for me. Yes. So it's, it's a lot of, um, it, you know, that's like our modern ideas of being a witch. Yeah. Come from that. Um, whereas in Salem, they're like, no, you can be you can be fucking Gigi Hadid. Yeah. And they're truly. accusing you because they want your land. And so back in the 1600s, Salem was basically like six or seven different towns. Right. Like that whole surrounding area. So people were accused literally in Boston. Like, they well, were yeah, we were talking kind of about everywhere. George Bur uh, George Burroughs, the former minister of Salem, who had moved to a town on the Vermont border because yeah. that's because like if you were a minister you would like travel if the town voted you out or whatever mm -hmm. you just have to go to a different town just, you have to go um so he like moved to a different town and they still went and got him which is crazy it's crazy but so that's pretty much all I have wow. for misconceptions that's fun I think this is just a good episode uh, there's a lot of info dumpy ones yes. which we have to do and sometimes we just want to talk about like I bet you thought it was this um and actually Yes, that's it. Actually, it's um, actually different. it's this. And actually, I think this is a good Frankenstein point. was a doctor. He was a doctor. He was in the that's monster. That's my most annoying thing I'll always do. Like, <laughs> and I fight myself from not doing it because I know it's annoying. <laughs> Frankenstein was the doctor. 
Frankie Stop is a doctor. And the monster's and the, the monster's monster. a monster. And if you actually read the book, the it's just he's referred it's to as the monster. Because Frankie Stop is a doctor. It's Frankie Stop a doctor. Monster. He's a doctor. monster. But it's true. Frankenstein was the doctor. He was the doctor. <laughs> Not to be that person. No, Not to be I'm... that person. But I think this is a good midway point to check in, check up. I am now on my new thesis of uh, like the difference between the, U- Euro- the European. Yeah, European. I always say UK. I know. I know. I want to say UK, but I think it's because of Monty Python. But I know, I know. It, it was European because there was like... a lot in Germany too. Oh yeah, there's a bunch. But I feel like Sweden. for all intents and purposes, it's mostly the UK. Yeah. Like the UK. I no. Let's just finish the podcast. I'm going to talk to you forever. <laughs> like I'm going to talk to you forever. Shall yeah, we do? It's, it's is just it, so interesting. Is it time? It's time. Let's make this tragedy about us. Because we forgot to last week. I can't believe that. So you know what? Honestly, hey, I think people make mistakes. People make people make mistakes. Fathers, brothers. So people I have a leave. I have a fun question. So we're Sorry, talking about <laughs> bringing people a lot leave. of energy. People leave. People leave. Friends break up. Friends get married. Taylor Swift. I'm worried about this new album, guys. I think it's going to be bad. The <laughs> art looks really, really bad. It looks like she's masturbating. Well, it, it, it's just like it's giving, it's like Halsey's um, Tumblr poetry, you know? Yeah, the Broken Hearted Boys no. Club or what, what's it called? The Tortured Poets Society. Okay, It's whatever. worse. Okay, okay yeah. What's, Broken Hearted what's, Boys Club is actually kind of Kind of cute. Yeah, that's a Charlie XCX album. You can have that for your improv troupe yeah. if you want. And yes, I'm talking to you. Do you think I'm talking to you? Surely, to you. if we were if we were able to actually get the stats on how many people who do improv listen to this podcast, it would be quite large, right? If you do improv and you're listening to this podcast, send us an email at girlhistorians at gmail Or alternately, send up a flare. Yeah, an SOS, and send us the an first SOS. time they use that. The Titanic. Yep. Ah, ah. Ah, I miss the Titanic. I know. But I love the witches. I know. It's just that's life. It's make new friends, but keep the old one. Mm-hmm. A silver, the other gold. But I have a fun question. Yeah, what's the question? So we're talking about misconceptions. Mm-hmm. If you were to start a Ooh. rumor about the Salem witch trials, what would okay. it be? Okay, well, because famously, we started a rumor about the Titanic. We did start a rumor about the Titanic. <laughs> and we buried it. We buried us addressing it kind of in like a Patreon release. <laughs> like the cowards we are. Um, we said that Molly Brown, well, I said that Molly Brown survived four shipwrecks. <laughs> um, that's untrue. They happen. call her the unsinkable Molly Brown <laughs> because she was just very active yeah. when the Titanic went down. There's actually a nurse that was on the Titanic. That Violet was in, Jessup. Who was in like, what, three or four shipwrecks. And that's who I was thinking of. Yes. So I did do hardcore fake news already. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure I'll do more. What I would start Fine. is... Um, a, a thing of like um, the women who um, were accused of being witches. Um, it, it was because um, it was because they were getting mad that they weren't uh, they weren't coming during sex. Because mm-hmm. I get pretty fucking bad. <laughs> and you know those Puritans like they're like the clit <laughs> is the devil's nub. <laughs> Well, you know, it's so crazy, too, that, like... The devil's beak. When I was reading about Puritan misconceptions, one of them was about um, how, like, everyone thinks that the Puritans, like, really condemn sex, like, even with yeah. the marriage. But apparently the Puritans were kind of, like... They condemned it more if you're... They were kind of in your business if you and your husband or wife were having not enough sex. Oh. They were sort of, like... Not, like, not enough, but they were just sort of, like, you guys should be having, like sex that For you God. know is like it's like a part of your marriage because like God has blessed you with this ability to do things. Yes. So I think that that is for sure. An, I mean, an there's amazing another misconception that we're going to talk about um later because there's a big rumor that like um there was fungus in the wheat that made everybody hallucinate like they were on LSD, oh, which yes. is like probably not true. I did save this for conspiracy theory. That's theories. for conspiracy theory and that's going to be a fun ass episode. That's going to be a fun episode. Um what would what's a rumor Ooh. that you would start? I would start a rumor about familiars. Ooh. I would be like, there's, I'd be like, next to Salem, there was like a cave where all the familiars lived <gasps> and they're still there. And if you go there, they'll eat you. I feel like one that I could actually start and maybe we should all just start lying about it. And this is, so, so are you familiar with the Tumblr thing where it was like, if you see somebody in real life and you say, I like your shoelaces. I like your shoelaces. Yeah. And you go, thanks. I got them from the president. That's how you can say that you're on yeah. Tumblr in public. Um, you should say, Rob is shaking his head. He's mad about that. <laughs> that was a thing. That was a thing. Um, we should start that tarot cards came from the Salem witch trials. <gasps> and that's kind of our way of doing a, a secret handshake or a secret kind of flair in public where if we say 
tarot cards came from the Salem witch trials, then you know that they listen to our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> tarot cards came from the Salem witch trials. and you Spread it say, around, like, guys. Thanks. My familiar lives in a cave. Yeah. We should also, we've, we've really dropped the ball on getting Rachel Zegler on the podcast. Oh my God. I can't believe we haven't talked about Rachel Zegler in a while. I know. Well, we gave, we fan cast her as Mary Warren. That's true. Our favorite girl. Rachel Zegler, please come on the podcast. We haven't forgot about I you. I see you commenting on Curtis Connors reels. <laughs> And I need you. You're so close. You're so you've all you've almost reached us. I know. That's that's really only one degree of separation. Like in in terms of the Kevin yeah. Bacon of it all, the six degrees of separation. I've met him a couple times. I feel like I I haven't met him, but you could easily have told me I met him, and I believe you. Yeah, um, Rachel, please, Rachel, come on the podcast. We're not, and we're not asking for Curtis Connor to come on the podcast. We're not asking we're for Curtis asking Connor. For we're asking for you, Zegler. Rachel Zegler. Curtis Connor doesn't need the exposure. He's already his. He's fucking, exposed. No, exactly. His algorithm, like he has got the YouTube algorithm under his, his chokehold. Booty hole. is out. What? He's exposed. Oh, he's exposed. Yes, I was his, like, wait. There's a picture of his booty. His out? butt's out. His butt's sticking out. His um, girlfriend one time served me and my sister while we were at Queen Street Warehouse, and my sister threw Iconic. up on the table, and we just left. <laughs> And on that note, and on that note. <laughs> thank you for tuning into this very silly episode of Girl Historians. Girl Historians, yeah. wow! And thank you so much for listening. This yes. is so sweet. Um, we let we have a Patreon. We do have a Patreon. Um, we will put it in the show notes in the li- in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, you, subscribe if you would like. We you get the episodes a week early. You also get bonus content. You get access to the Discord. It's a real fun time. And anything we feel like doing. And if you go to the second tier, the second tier is Salem Bitches. Mm -hmm. And you get a shout out in the video. Yeah. I I mean, in the podcast. Sorry, I'm in my YouTube shit right now. (laughs) Thank you so much to Angelina. To John Jassa. Max Holler. Madison. And Kendall. Thank you so much. Kendall's been popping off in the Discord. So we have- Kendall, thank you. Yeah, so thank you, Kendall. Thank you, Kendall. We'll see you next week, We'll see you next week. Thank you so much as always. Bye. Bye.